what do you know about growth hacking? Do you know anything about growth hacking? No, that's not here. No, it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Only about hacking. Only about hacking. About growth hacking. No. Okay. Uh, I'm not an expert myself. I uh, keep learning, so I will summarize my learnings right now, so you can have them as well. So there are three rules for growth hacking. Uh, for me, the number one rule is that you you know nothing about growth hacking. I know that might sound a little bit like a uh, five class, but uh, that's the reality. That uh, uh, you don't go into hacking if you say that you know something about it. You have to have a mentality that you learn all the time. Then uh, the second uh, rule is that you have to live it. I mean, uh, uh, you have to be a living example. You have to share your knowledge uh, related to the third. And then the third rule is that. You have to have uh, ethics and uh, morals, and of course, you should avoid manipulating others. And uh, I have at the end the growth hacker of 2016. Can you anyone predict who that guy is? The, the growth hacker of 2016. You, everybody knows him. But do you know his name? Precisely. <laughs> Donald Trump is the growth hacker of 2016, and I will tell you exactly how he growth hacked his presidential election later on. And you can check the facts as well, but that's exactly the, the number one growth hacker in 2016. It was Donald Trump. So you have something to learn from him, but I think that the guy is violating the third rule of being uh, ethical and having morals. So it's a negative, uh, a negative example. So I will start with number one, and the number one in whatever you do, you need to define your goals. You need to have a, a, a kind of like a compass, a mental compass of where, which direction you are going. So when you do growth hacking, you, need, you can download, you can find a marketing campaign model canvas. It's standard, pretty standard. And then what you need to do is you need to put the value proposition for the segment of the market that you are addressing. So for example, let's say that your business is, and I will take this uh, example all, all the lecture, uh, through the whole lecture. Let's say that your business wants to launch uh, a new kind of like a music CD. All right? So that's your new business. So the prospects, the target audience is if you're a music producer, what what is your target audience? Kind of like let's kind of like wake up a little bit. Listeners. Listeners. Number one. And number two? Target group? Who else except the list the ones who buy the CD? Artists. Artists. Not the art, the competitors, no, but gatekeepers like DJs, radio stations. DJs, radio stations, and then of course the record companies, right? So in the marketing canvas, you have three prospects, three different segments, the listeners, the radio DJs, and the, and the music stores or the music labels, and then you have each proposition for, for each person. So you don't say the same thing to the producer or the listener. Did you understand that? Right? It's a basic marketing course. Have you taken any basic marketing course? Who are the customers? What are you talking about? Right? So don't start any growth hacking if you don't have um, a kind of like a model of, uh, of the activity that you are planning to do. Otherwise, it will get confusing. Have you ever seen a dog changing his tail? If you don't have a plan, that's what you do. You, you, you change your tail all the time. So um, then there is a little bit more advanced. The R model. Spell it for me. How is it? Ah, uh, ah? Uh? Uh, okay, we're waking up slowly, slowly. All right, so the R model is, uh, it's basically what it says, is uh, acquisition, activation, retention, referral, and revenue. So think of your business as a, uh, as a factory, all right? Or a, as a fast food chain, McDonald's. So acquisition for McDonald's will mean what? Come, a little bit fast brains now. Someone, because he's hungry. 
there is a need, right? So acquisition for McDonald's will be that someone visits the store because he's hungry. Activation, what will it will mean? Means that he comes to the desk, there is some lovely lady or gentleman over there and says, Big Mac with fries or with Coca-Cola, right? There happens the activation. Then you have the retention. Hmm. I ate the burger, I left, how do I come back? How often do I come back, you know? Do you keep me a loyal customer to McDonald's? Then there is a referral that, okay, I came back, I ate uh, another burger. Uh, I want you to tell about your experience to another customer so you can bring him to McDonald's as well. That's the referral. And then there is the revenue, of course, from each of all these actions, there are some euros coming into my pocket, right? So from the marketing canvas, the messages, then the pipeline, like how do I grab the customer? What do I tell him? How do I bring him back? Do you understand me what I'm saying, right? Messages, then mechanic actions, all clear? Those two are fundamentals. And then we start, let's say that we have the example of the music producer, he made his new CD and he wants to sell his CD now to the growth, to the companies out there. Nobody knows him, right? He's just a passionate music guy that he loves his music. He thinks he has a success track and he wants the music record business to find him. How does he start? How will you start? I, I tell you what I will do. I will go into LinkedIn Premium Sales Navigator for 30 days is for free. I don't pay anything, right? 30 days. I put my credit card, I put a reminder into my calendar that the 29th day I have to remove my credit card from the service and I activate LinkedIn Sales Navigator, right? Then I go and search DJs, producers in Helsinki, Turku, Tampere region, right? That system will give me the addressable market, first of all. It will tell me, the sales navigator of LinkedIn will tell me that approximately in your region, there are 3,000 potential customers. Because LinkedIn sales navigator, that's how we, it's very powerful too, okay? Let's say that you want to sell t-shirts to shops. You put their shops in these geographies, it gives you a list of all the addressable market. Then what you do, you download uh, a plugin called Hunter. Hunter. And it's in, you put it into the Chrome browser. You have the search, but you don't have their emails. Then you click on the Hunter and you get 150 emails of those contacts into your mailbox. Did you get 150 new leads to start your day? Right? Is it legal? Absolutely. Okay, so here you found your first 150 contacts for uh, the DJs and the producers that basically you want to reach. Yes, please. Yeah, it's free. If you, go, if you, if you want to go 50,000 records per month, uh, then uh, you pay 50 euros, but for many records. And if you ever wonder how those uh, Indians uh, uh, cold calling kind of like is happening here in Europe, that's exactly what they do. They start with a sales navigator, put keyword software development, then they get 10,000 records, put the plugin and then they do social calling even from a tool itself, so you don't have to pay much. So it's like this thing has gone into really scientific kind of like levels nowadays. Then. Okay, you have the emails. What do you do when you have the emails? Have you ever done a campaign, a marketing campaign? No? Uh, we, we, usually when I try to sell to someone, I role play with my wife. And she always tells me that uh, I'm a lousy salesman. <laughs> but if you come and think of it, the sales process is just a kind of semi-robotic action. You say, you break the ice, you say, hello, how are you? You break the ice, right? Then uh, you're trying to say something that you might be interested about, you know, that I have as a product. 
then you kind of like, uh, there is a buying in, and then you give another message and another message until finally someone closes, right? Have you experienced that into your professional life when you try to sell something? People buy with the first handshake. Who can sell with one handshake? I want to do business with that person. <laughs> so basically, active campaign gives you a behavioral uh, canvas. And you can say that if the user does this, send him this message. If the user does that, send him this message. If in that message reply like this, send him that message. Do you understand what I'm saying about behavioral, right? So you don't do a, a, an email campaign that basically has one message for everybody, but you have thought about this uh, branch of the behavior, and in each part of the branch there is a decision point, and then you link that decision point with a particular message. Is it difficult to understand? No. It can be automated, very simple. It has a, a graphical uh, user interface. The 30 days uh, free, it's okay, but for startups, they have unlimited plans. Still, you don't have to pay. I think that the only thing that you might pay is for a better coffee for me. So let's say kind of like a, yeah. Uh, that's that's a very correct. Uh, uh, now you have to be very careful with the spam, but the way that basically I have uh, told you so far to collect emails uh, are uh, a clean way, and 150 emails will not kind of like have a severe impact into your bounce rates. You will have severe impact into your email campaigns when you have. Uh, above the 5% average per month. So if you send 100,000 messages, if 5% of those messages, they got bounced, bounced, your server provider will kind of like a shut you down. So it doesn't go automatically into spam. Someone needs to mark it as a spam. So you have to make your email quite interesting. Now, statistically speaking, in 100 emails, you are not going to get 100 open emails. You are going to get somewhere uh, on average 7 to 20% open. And then something around 5 to 10% click. So in 100 emails, when you have 20%, it means 20. And then if 10% kind of like uh, clicks on it, that means 2. But uh, starting your day with uh, at least two potential customers is better than zero, right? Better. Definitely better, yeah. Let's say that you want to increase your uh, status update in LinkedIn. Like how many of you uh, went into LinkedIn and see how you rank? Like, come on, don't be shy, raise your hands. Come on, come on, and now someone is lying here. You, you didn't check how you rank in LinkedIn? You can manipulate that very easily. Uh, I can become the number one profile view in uh, profile in uh, Finland. Right? Uh, I can use that in order to, uh, for example, before I go into a conference, I want to take a look at all the profiles of the people, kind of like that they will be in the conference. So they actually know me a little bit. You know, when someone looks into your LinkedIn profile, you tend to go back and look who is that guy that basically look at you, right? You do commonly do that, right? So there is a, uh, another plugin. Uh, it's called Social Lead Machine Plugin. And what that will do is you can automate to auto-visit every single pay person into your LinkedIn profile. So basically, I started three days ago just to demonstrate you here on how we can skyrocket my profile. And now I'm kind of like in the 1% of Finland uh, top LinkedIn profile just because I programmed the LinkedIn to go and auto visit every single one of my 3,700. How you can use that? Let's say that you're looking for a job. 
you go into the LinkedIn search, you identify the people that basically they might offer you a job, and then you program the plugin to go and visit them every Friday so they can feel guilty that they are working and you're not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but you can kind of like uh, manipulate that to, to do many things. Like, for example, the conference idea that I said, that you go into a conference and uh, you are very eager to kind of like uh, see the most important people in that conference, make your list, put the social plugin to visit that profile. And I'm pretty sure you never heard that before. Like, I'm following you on Twitter. Ah, yeah, I know. I know you. You have heard that, right? That's how it works. All right, so, so far so good? It's, I promised 21, so I have to go very fast. <laughs> now, there, there is this so-called uh, search engine optimization, and I can tell you that I have been in the, in the market for, for quite a bit, and I have talked with a lot of search engine optimizations uh, uh, people here in Finland, the fact is that uh, search engine optimization is uh, as complicated as uh, growth hacking. So you can never, if you are not kind of like a dedicated into search engine optimizations, because Google changes the algorithms, uh, it's much more better to go and find someone that basically will do this job for you, right? So there is this service called Fiverr, $5 for any task. Have you ever heard that? You can pay $5 for any task, right? So, and then you can post and say, okay, you know, I have my startup. I'm gonna pay you $5. Can you kind of like make me a search engine optimization plan? Here you go, 24 hours later, $5 reduced from your Tekes application to, <laughs> to someone in India that does this job. You can claim in Tekis that you had an army of guys doing this. So, but that's how it works. Then, you want to, to get another 500 leads. That is, uh, yeah, that's uh, Eliademy.com. Uh, that's actually the startup that I have. And this is a completely different way of utilizing the platform that we have created. Uh, in this particular way, you bet into the thing that the person in this particular, in the area that he has a problem, he search to find information, search to find, to find some course. So for example, uh, if you are a DJ producer, you create a course for amateurs to demonstrate on how they can mix things. And then basically you draw an audience to your profile you know, for example, you just release your uh, new record on techno and you want, nobody knows you. So in order to create that traction and growth, you create a course on how to mix uh, in the DJ, you give it for free to all the techno fans, and then slowly, slowly, loyal base will come and visit you and uh, learn about your tricks and learn about your music as well. So, in Eliademy, usually when they create a course uh, about their startups, uh, they get 500 leads within two months period. So people are, do search for courses or how-tos or YouTube videos, right? So um, let's say that all good, you're doing very fine but your competitor is doing a little bit better and you're a little bit envious why they are so good and uh, you are not. The first thing that basically you need to check is how that machinery of your competitor works. So if you go into buildwith.com and you just put the name of your competitor over there, you will get a full detailed breakdown of all the infrastructure software that he's using, versions, support mechanisms, CRMs uh, deployed, everything. So if your competitor is working really good, copy with pride. You go there, you put the competitor name, Chinese, they are, Chinese, they are smiling. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Copy with pride before Chinese kind of like will copy it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you can see, you can find out that basically you have been using a, a wrong CRM and uh, his CRM is, uh, is much more effective. I mean, you know, you just kind of like get a snapshot. Yes, please. Yeah, you just go to the website and you put the, the name of the, of the company and then you get a detailed breakdown of everything. Uh, really, kind of like the detailed breakdown might be two, three pages long. It's actually very much detail. Yeah? For free, of course. It was like a free course here, right? <laughs> what we were talking about. <laughs> so all of these are for free, okay? Courtesy to the AVP, <laughs> of course. Um, now, be careful before you enter into the dark, dark uh, zone. You know, like in the Jedi's, you are with the Force, or you are with the, you know, the others. You run out of ideas. You don't know what to do. You kind of like a, no one is sharing you any growth hacking tips. There is a really black magic into the. Uh, Black Hat Forum. If you go into the Black Hat Forum, 99% of the things that basically they are proposing there are uh, most probably unethical or reaching the threshold of being unethical or maybe in some cases they are even illegal. But it gives you into the mentality of how hackers are thinking on solving a particular problem. All right, so I don't recommend you to buy anything from there, but kind of like a looking into what kind of uh, uh, innovations and ideas they are bringing out, it's uh, always a good idea, okay? So remember, don't manipulate others, unless you're Donald Trump. Then um, um, one of the things that basically I have been using quite successfully is a similar web. Uh, basically what you can do is you can make a comparison between two different uh, websites and you can see how your website performs in uh, uh, referrals, how your website performs in email campaigns, search traffic analysis and so and so and then you can uh, look at it compared to your competitor. All right? So for example if your competitor is doing best in the referrals, then what do you do? <laughs> Thank you very much. You go to one slide before, you look into what he's using into, you know, kind of like a, his uh, referral system, and then you give a try to that system. Maybe it's better than the one that you, you have, right? Then uh, lately, I have found this, uh, fell in love with this uh, service called Zapier. Uh, what is Zapier? Now it starts to be a little bit more advanced. There is one service and it has an API. You understand what an API is? Everybody understands what an API? API is like a, a, a protocol, a kind of like a, you know, a protocol that a service gets connected, right? API. And there is another service here with another API, and another service here with another API. Zapier can take all these three APIs together and automate a particular task. Can you think uh, of, uh, of something that basically you can automate by m messing up three different APIs together? Yeah? Make a TV channel out of YouTube videos. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that's a good idea. That's actually a very good idea. That's a brilliant idea. That's, I, actually, I don't think that anyone has done that. And uh, you should do it. What do you promote? <laughs> that's a good idea. Next time you have 22. Yeah, that's how you learn growth hacking. <laughs> that was a growth hacking, you know? Make a, make a uh, channel in YouTube and then you start putting all the YouTube channels uh, videos related to that thing over there, right? Then you get impressions. And because you get impressions, you get what? 
Revenue, exactly. Uh, did you understood his idea? Do you remember in the old days that basically there were just websites that basically they had a little information about news? How do they call it? Scoop it? Scoop, right? These mini blogs? And then they were selling ads on the site. Those people make money out of it. So with Zapier, for example, what I can do is that, um, let's say that there is a tweet about a particular subject, okay? then I can uh, integrate Zapier to Twitter, and every time that basically there is that tweet with that particular subject, there is some kind of counter tweet. I have my support desk, and the angry customer comes in, I can kind of like connect it to Zapier and issue automatically discounts. So you have to know your services to figure out how you can integrate with Zapier, but it, it te te takes five, six different kind of like items together and create one unified uh, behavioral uh, response. Do you understand that? Uh, yeah. So in order to hack, you need to hack some services as well. So let's say that you, you have a blog and you want to create a blog post with uh, keywords that basically they are relevant to search engines, right? They, they, this content edit, editorial thing. You can go into this Boosmo and then put the, the, the headline that you want. And do you remember the old uh, bullshit uh, random generators that we had at the office? It's the same thing, but with the headlines. <laughs> So, but it can create your really kind of like successful headline for your blog post. Um, do you do keyword analysis? Have you ever done uh, keywords analysis? Keywords? Uh, do you, have you ever used a Google Keyword Planner? You have. All right, and what's your strategy with that? Mostly use it like to find people. Sometimes like finding like synonyms or like mm -hmm. more like using Google Advanced Search. And which which keyword you will attack? The one that it has one to ten million uh, searches, or one to one hundred thousand? Oh, we mostly find like for example, you you have like an adjective which is not really giving you like so many results. You try to find a synonym which is like let's say a noun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, with the keyword, what I tend to do is to find, you know, every day on the Google, they are searching billions of searches, right? Some of those searches are related to your product. So, for example, what's your product? Do you have a product or service that you are, are you a student? And you're trying to find a job, for example? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's take the example of I'm trying to find a job, okay? If I go into the Google Keywords Planner and I'm a recruiter, what things I will ask as a recruiter of Google? Huh? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm the hiring manager, right? What, what, what things I should search on Google? Or a job, uh, kind of like a specific job uh, profile, right? And if I'm searching for a job, what am I going to search? Yeah, well, the, the keyword analysis is a little bit difficult to, 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 to explain, but uh, do you know that basically nowadays the job CVs, they go into some machine learning and they identified specific keywords, right? Have they told you that? What kind of keywords they have told you to put into your CVs? What kind of, what kind of keywords they told you to put in the CVs? Excuse me? Yeah, 
so they have told you to add those keywords. Yeah, because if you add those keywords, then most likely the recruiter will read your CV. Correct? The same thing applies with a web page. You have to do a keyword search with this tool or Google keyword uh, uh, search and find those right keywords to put inside your blog or text. You understand what I'm saying, right? So um, let's say that you want to find out where your competi competitors are spending money in advertisement and what kind of colors they use. Do you know that basically even the color that you use in an ad can attract a user or kind of like repel a user, right? So that's why you do the A-B testing to find out which kind of like a things fit better into a person. So if you don't want to reinvent the wheel, you go into this SEMRAS and then you can look into your competitors' past campaigns and then their success rates. So you learn from others. Do you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. What can they do or Facebook? Or well, yeah, well, all social media, yeah. Okay. One very important source of uh, growth hacking is Quora. Do you use Quora? Yes. Uh, for, for, for what purposes? And if I Google your name right now, am I going to find you in Quora? You can try. I use a different name. I use a different name. What I learned is that uh, in the early phases of Eliademy, 3% of our traffic was coming from Quora. 3%. Very low, but 3% uh, in, uh, in 1,000 users is actually quite, uh, quite good. It's a, it's a 3%, it's kind of like a quite big, big number. And how we did that was that I went personally in every single question related to learning and I answered it as accurately as I could. What it shows that, it shows that I have substance knowledge. I can reply into a, a, a request in Quora and then basically in every time that basically I created uh, an answer, I put the, the link of our company. And therefore, I created also a backlink. Do you, you know backlinks, right? Yeah. So Quora for me, it's like a tool that basically, it's a really good for growth hacking. If you want to create a, a little bit of uh, uh, discussion about your product, find the relevant topics in, uh, in Quora or Reddit, and then start discussing into those uh, two communities. Okay? Yes? Yeah, of course, uh, you know, you, I, I wouldn't lie there. And I also actually put a disclaimer that, uh, according to my knowledge, this is the best answer that I can offer, you know? So the person who reads it, then he knows that maybe I'm biased, but I was kind of like a forthcoming to say that this is who I was or I am, right? So always being transparent. A, there is a very nice manual of uh, the Arab Spring and it was issued by, uh, don't laugh, but by the CIA. And it describes on how the growth hacking operations in the Arab Spring took place. Basically, you can buy 100,000 profiles with uh, 500 euros. And then you can have a console that manages these 5,000 profiles. You can have a console with 5,000 profiles, 3,000 on Twitter, 2,000 on Facebook. And then you can automate those profiles to go and start doing postings at a particular point of time. I show you all the technologies so far on this, right? And then you can see that 5,000 people, they are talking about Egypt. But it's in English, not in Arabic. And then it makes you wonder. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so there, if you just Google uh, Arab Spring CIA operational manual, you will find it. It's like 50 pages long. It describes all the techniques that they have been used into uh, cyber warfare because growth hacking is a, is, a, is a kind of form of cyber warfare as well. Um, then press release. You went to the shower. Make a press release about it. You ate good. Don't take a picture. Make a press release about it. You know, you went for a lunch and you had a business partner and, and you discuss about things, about intentions, about your business. Write a blog post about it. Tell something the world about it. Press release, press release, press release, press release, press release. One day you will appear in Wikipedia. And that's, a, that's an achievement. Why? Do you know why? Because Wikipedia, if you go and start editing your name, it will say self-promotion. But if you have press releases over press releases over press releases with your name on it, that gives enough data to Wikipedia to start compiling a record for your business, for your name, and so and so. So press release about your shower, press release about your dinner, press release about your product, press release about everything. Don't worry about it. Just release it, okay? Wikipedia, by the way, in the early phases of Eliademy was 20% of our traffic, 20%. Just uh, a small listing about who we are and what the company does. And that's free marketing. No one paid for it, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're on your blog, on your website. Yeah, it's kind of like a... Oh. Ah, yeah, now, very good question. In the press release, what else you can do is that basically there is the press wiki. Uh, if you have a, a real press release, you can go into the press wiki and publish it. Then there are press release uh, out, uh, outlets that you send that press release and then they redistribute in magazines. Uh, there are directories for press releases. You can go and manually put that press release there. You can do all that things as well. Like you can take the press release and start moving it in multiple locations, which is a good idea. Yep. The idea of the keywords in like the other websites. Of course, the keywords is uh, fundamental. Fundamental, the keywords is fundamental. Did I forget to mention that? No, keywords is fundamental. Then uh, uh, conference. Let's say that basically there is a fantastic conference going on, right? Like, for example, there is one uh, today, Arctic 15. But I, I tell you a true story. Uh, 2013, first SLAS came. You remember, you, you know SLAS, right? SLAS, first SLAS came. And I was very pissed off why they didn't invite me to speak, uh, to speak over there. So I said, I'm not going to go. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go, but SLAS is important. I said, no problem. We took the uh, Eliademy Twitter account, the Eliademy Facebook page, the Eliademy Instagram. We have over 50 identities that they are real, not fake. And then we went into a programming tool and we put messages every 45 minutes, every re ev reaction in a particular keyword, you know, with the hashtag slash 2013. People, they were walking into the auditorium and you know what they have? They have these big uh, screens to show the social feed coming of the participants. Hey, every 45 minutes, there was also an Eliademy one. <laughs> <laughs> so they got, they got fed up with me. The next year they invite me. <laughs> so, you don't have to go into the conference. You just find out the hashtags and prepare your virtual attack from home with your pajamas on. That's what I do all the time. So, you know, just kind of like uh, find the hashtag and, uh, and, and go after the conference, right? You don't have to be there. Yes, please. Each conference has a hashtag. Yeah, right? So, for example, slash will be slash 2000, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, handler, handler, or ha handler or hashtag. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're right, handler. 
Uh, all right, so newsjacking. Newsjacking is, um, there is something popular happening in the news right now, and then somehow your story becomes relevant and then you can kind of like, in a sense, hijack that news, okay? I give you another example, the Yola. Do you remember Yola? Yeah. Yola, right. Yola went into the 2013, when we launched Eliademy, they went into the Barcelona conference, okay? To release the Yola plan. But Eliademy had no budget to go over there and uh, we were not even relevant to Yola because we were a learning platform, but because we are Migo guys as well, so there was some continuation over there. So basically, we knew Jack, the Yola uh, trend on the Twitter. And for two days, we, we, we actually news Jack and we offer a course on QT for all Yola developers minus 50% discount. We made 3,000 euros uh, during those days when the Yola guys, they were in Barcelona and partying. And just by hacking the Twitter with the hashtags, we made 3,000 euros because we were able to sell a course about Yola QT uh, uh, development. It, it, you know, the demand, the supply, the information, nothing bad about it, right? So, here is a, a, an upcoming trend. Text is boring. Video is everything nowadays. So, you know, YouTube and the videos, kind of like uh, they are gaining ground because people are bored of, uh, of uh, reading. Podcast is coming up, you know, record your voice and dr while you're driving the car, have the favorite podcast uh, play for you. So, for example, I strongly recommend right now that if you have a content strategy with the particular keywords, automatically convert that into a podcast and let it be as an audio file. And there is this Finnish startup called Kieku. Uh, that they, they have uh, this uh, podcast uh, application and automatically can convert your WordPress documents into a podcast with uh, one click. So as you publish the text, you can have also the audio file uh, available. All right, and now it comes into the growth hacker of uh, 2016. And I will explain you how he did it. But you have to pay a little bit of attention, all right? So any questions for the, the previous one? No? Yes, please. Just one addition to the, the slide on similar web. I mean, I've personally been using it uh, during the past couple months for prospecting quite a bit. You can mm -hmm. get fantastic lists of the 50 top sites uh, geographically. Mm -hmm. And if you download basically all of those lists, you can just put them into Excel and you can do a pivot table on that and have fun with it. And you can, for example, find out the well, most visited adult sites in Europe or other interests that you, you might have for your startup. That's a brilliant idea. And, and you know, I, I was uh, using the startuprunking.com to compile similar type of lists for potential uh, collaborators. It's a really good idea. Yeah, just don't automate it. Otherwise, you're, you're going to be banned from their sites. But it takes like less than an hour to actually compile those lists for, say, Europe or Okay. Or another geographic region. Yeah, that's very good. Any other question? No. Okay, so the growth hacker 2016, uh, Trump. So I tell you a story. In uh, 2006 in Cambridge, uh, a very young fellow, a uh, mathematician, uh, he came up with a technique that based on 70 Facebook likes, that you or I do, he can predict what kind of personality type I am. Do you know the personality types? Uh, have you done this Myers test? Uh, yeah? Well, that it's old technology. The new technology is called Ocean, that is much more accurate into the prediction on the personality type. Have you answered uh, which side of the toilet paper should be on the left side or on the right side on Facebook? Raise your hand. Have you ever taken this uh, quiz on Facebook if the role of the toilet paper should be on the left side or on the right side? 
Have you seen this Facebook related to the colors? If you can see the colors right? You have seen those? You have answered those? Yeah. Uh, have you seen about these quizzes related to uh, what you like more, an image, uh, a boat, or, or, or... You have seen those in Facebook, right? Yeah. So basically, with 70 statistical samples like those ones, he can actually predict the personality character of individual. That means how agreeable I am. If I am going to agree uh, immediately or if I'm going to agree after a lot of discussion. That's a personality trait. You know, some people they say yes to everything. Some other people they say no, right? Agreeability. So the, mod the model was so accurate and is so accurate that it's very scary. So with 70 Facebook likes, I can predict your personality. So some clever guy uh, took that mathematical model and created a political campaign machinery. Poli so you can buy elections. Now, how do you buy an election? In the United States, you don't have to vote for, to win the majority vote, right? What you need to win is the states, correct? So you don't make a campaign that is for 300 million Americans. You just make a campaign for the states that you need to win because the other states, you have them already. So Donald Trump focused with the Cambridge Analytica in seven states. And because he knew the psychological profile of the voter, he was able to robot create 100,000 articles. Do you remember before when I was saying that you can create headlines? In the A-B testing, what do you learn? You learn that one headline might be good, another headline might not be good, right? So he was able to robot generate fake news or alternative news, but not only the news, but associate headlines with it. The same news, but different headlines. And push those headlines into the Facebook mini feeds as sponsored events, which subsequently increased the sentiment of the voters towards his side. Did you understood the trick? I know because you are answering all these Facebook silly questions, how easy you can agree as a person. I take that for a fact. Then I know that you are interested about this kind of news media and I create you a title that it will be very catchy in your eye. And then you go and you read the media. You don't know if it's true or not. That's why you, the whole point of uh, fake news was, right? So with the ocean model on the segmentation, with the robo creation of headlines, and with paid campaigns in Facebook postings, he was able to win seven electoral states that basically gave him the presidency for 2016. If you don't believe me that this is the case, just Google Cambridge Analytica and then Politico, which is uh, a, a U US uh, based uh, think tank, uh, very, <laughs> or, 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 or other kind of like a, and then you can, you can see how much it goes for, uh, how much an election goes into, for, for up for a grabs. I mean, Vladimir Putin is doing it with the guns. The Americans, they are doing it with algorithms. So that was the growth hacker of 2016. And the last uh, but not least slide of the 21 hacks is that you always learn, like the gentleman here gave us a very nice idea about the YouTube videos automated. If you do it, I'm going to sell it. <laughs> Any other good idea? Yes? So maybe the same thing that you were talking about. So the same elections, making two things. Make sure that the people who support Hillary don't vote at all if you cannot change their mind. That was also for me. I yeah. think so. For example, black people who support Hillary showing the thought about Hillary against black people in the US so that they won't, uh, won't vote for either of the candidates. Because your supporters will still vote, but your opponents don't. You are not able to get them to vote to you. That, that, 
no, yeah. it's a complicated thought as what you described, but there are also the thing that the hacking meant that if these those guys do, don't do anything, I will win. That's right. And, 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 you know, the growth hacking is about taking the tools, having a goal, taking the tools, modify the tools to serve a purpose. Right? Yeah. That's why I said that, uh, yeah, that's why I started with the rule number three, that I said, uh, have morals, don't uh, manipulate others. Uh, but, you know, let's be realistic. We are humans, right? So, but at least some decency is good. I make it in uh, one hour, precisely. We have time for questions. I don't know which, which one you like the most, which one you didn't like. Uh, which one you like the most? You like the 150 leads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was good, but what about the kind of like uh, being number one in, uh, in your LinkedIn status? <laughs> what about kind of like uh, having the number one profile in LinkedIn by auto, auto visiting? I think you, you give a good structure how to go forward. That should be, you know, just starting. So, yeah. kind of gave me a way to, you know, start with LinkedIn, yeah. and move here, move forward. And that's for me, but I really like one. Yeah, well, the, the keywords is the most difficult one. Yeah, the keywords analysis is the most difficult one. Do you have a question? Yes, yeah. For what purpose? For, for what, for just for fun? Yeah, what do you want to, to do? Uh, like, which, which one of those you want to increase? The acquisition. The quota. Yeah, the quota is the, is the, is the funniest. Yeah, what, what's the uh, SAS all about? Do which one? Ah, you do that. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, did you hear what she was doing? Please kind of like say it once again. Stand up. Stand, yeah, yeah, so tell. Yeah, I'm working in a company uh, who is helping online stores to uh, increase their conversion rates and putting uh, values on online store product pages. So people are more engaged and then they stay a longer time at the uh, website and then you're a CEO, you look higher. And how do you generate that? Uh, it's free. It's on, it's on how, how do you generate the content? You take it from YouTube. You take it from YouTube. Uh, exactly. Okay. So, uh, exactly. What to Donald Trump was uh, doing, finding conspiracy theories, changing the title, put them into the forum, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Any, anything else? I have this kind of like a little bit of a privacy question because I actually... Using yeah. So I had this nice list of leads and we um, started sending emails with you know, multiple events. Um, but then it's a little bit of a question um, because I think in Pivot it's okay if you get the email out of the blue, if it's a work email especially. But then, for example, a friend of mine, like she works in another company, but they had a similar kind of situation, and someone actually told him, aha, I have not subscribed for any kind of things, and he is now basically trying to sue them for like spam. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, well, if you get the data from LinkedIn, the only way to get the data from LinkedIn is from a field that says, uh, you are, av you are uh, uh, available to be reached at. So by your own consent, you put your email there. Because in LinkedIn clearly states, you can be reached at. Some people, they put their email there. Some people, they don't. The method that I recommend here was through LinkedIn with the hunter. There is another way that basically you can go and say, uh, my attack target is Nokia. I put the Nokia.com, give me all the emails of that company. That, no, because that, 
it kind of like uh, does something else. You know, it takes data from here and there and put them together, makes a prediction that basically most probably this is a Nokia.com email and adds that into your list, right? I wouldn't do that. That's a really a black uh, thing. But on the LinkedIn example, it clearly states, and that's why I wrote it, it's legal. There are some countries in Europe like Austria that if you haven't explicitly state that you want to receive an email from me, then you are violating the law. But I think that those guys are living a little bit in the dark ages. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Like, if I walk down the street and basically I kind of like a bump into you and say hello, does it hurt? You know? But you know, there are sometimes these people who just like, I don't know, maybe they have nothing to do, but they like, just because they want to. Like I was like my mother. Yeah, uh, I, I know those people. Do you recommend making the emails look like I'm sending them as an individual or looking like a newspaper, kind of an uh, email list, kind of newsletter, so that they understand that it's automatic? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have, a, I don't have a, an opinion on that one. You have to, you have to see what works. I don't, if you go personal or non-personal, I don't have an opinion on that. There are people that they do marketing campaigns and they know all the details related to the colors, the text, you know, the time of the day, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But uh, I don't have any recommendations right now. Yeah? What do you think or feel about uh, attractive email? I mean, I personally have used both and I've actually re realized that you don't really need the tracking if you're doing other things right. Tracking email to what? Uh... So basically having a script in your email that sends you the information on if it's open and actually... But there are the Chrome plugins for that one, so why to create a script? Oh, I mean, there, there are like so many ready-made solutions for that, but you can basically... Now, nowadays, I don't care if someone read my email or not. Because if they have read, then most probably they will reply, and that means another email from me, so... <laughs> <laughs> But, but you mean in the campaigns? Yeah. In the campaigns, then, like, active campaign is tracking all this for you. So you don't have to... All, all these are automated nowadays. Yeah. Yes. This is very new, at least for me, and great presentations. Thank you for that. Is there any You're welcome. Material that, for example, you have or other people have online, videos or educational content related to this? Maybe you have a course on this? Uh, yeah, they are, uh, they are kind of like a multiple uh, resources that basically you can find out there and multiple videos. Uh, in fact, before I made my presentation, I did a search to find out kind of like a, if they are better presenters and if they have any latest news. Uh, I will say that uh, the things are going so rapidly that the current trend in the growth hacking is to make you think on how to growth hack because all these uh, tools very rapidly, they kind of like a change. So today is like this, six months down the road, LinkedIn will close all the loops. You don't have access into that anymore. So you cannot stay with one mindset all the time. You have to all the time kind of like a figure out a new way. So you have to Google all the time. Do you use Google Alerts? You just go into Google Alerts, kind of like, and put one uh, alert, top growth hacking tip. If in 365 days someone will write a new tip, then you will have it in your mailbox. That's the, gro that's the growth hacking mindset. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, thank you very much. I don't know everything. I kind of like, you just figure out how to know things. Sure, yeah. And, and we, we do have in, uh, on Eli Ademi, actually, the Alto, Alto Up Campus courses, they are still on Eli Ademi. You can take them for free on pitching, on marketing, and, and, and so and so. But on growth hacking, you didn't have any. But maybe we, we will put this video up. Any other question? Uh, you do quite a bit of um, like enterprise-level sales. Uh, what's your favorite tool for traversing like, organizational structures? 
except for like the, the old-fashioned way, which is just going around and asking people and sending, for example, appropriate contact messages. To whom? Well, if you're trying to find the decision maker in a, let's say, a multinational corporation. Mm -hmm. And you have seen those diagrams that the decision maker is actually the secretary of the Xbox that basically... You, you can never find that decision maker. <laughs> um, HubSpot, uh, kind of like... A, once you put the uh, details of a particular individual, then automatically it will aggregate from multiple sources and gives you the company target, the revenue, and all this kind of stuff. So, actually, that's pretty good. But uh, do you do one-to-one uh, one -one, uh, cold phone calls? That's what you do? You do cold phone calls? Yeah, if, if, if you have a really good hunch on someone who would actually know uh, the appropriate contact, in that case, that can work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that basically this is a good idea. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah. All right. And I also say, but well, name dropping. When the first guy tells you to call, the second guy, you always tell, them, okay, this monkey told me to call you. No, definitely. So <coughs> no, then you have social proof that you actually don't have. Maybe the seventh guy will ask you, how do you know the guy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. All right, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.